are increasing demands for food and plant-based materials due to population growth. Current forecasts predict that global food production must double by 2050. Innovative strategies for sustainably increasing crop production are needed to meet such demands in the face of climate change and diminishing resources for plant production. The Cluster of Excellence on Plant Science, CPLAS, is an international leading center for plant sciences that includes more than 50 working groups based at the Heinrich Heine University in Düsseldorf, the University of Cologne, the Max Planck Institute for Plant Breeding Research, and Forschungszentrum Jüdisch. These groups collaborate and share one common goal, to establish the scientific basis for future production of food, feed, and energy plants. The CPLAS aims to decode the genomic architecture that underpins various complex plant traits with major impacts on growth, yield, and use of resources. One research question is how can we increase plant performance? Some plants, such as the grass miscanthus, can grow up to four meters tall within only a few months. This productivity is due to a very efficient type of photosynthesis, so-called C4 photosynthesis, as well as other factors. If more globally cultivated crops, such as rice, used this turbocharged version of conventional C3 photosynthesis, crop productivity would likely increase by up to 30%, while resource requirements would stay the same. The striking difference between C3 and C4 photosynthesis can be observed underneath a microscope. c scientists have identified genes that affect leaf architecture and morphology, and thus determine the type of photosynthesis. Moreover, biochemical processes within the leaf are analyzed by the cluster's mass spectrometry platform. Computational biologists and mathematicians working at the cluster summarize these data in models. In this way, c scientists were able to simulate the evolutionary steps from C3 to C4 plants and thereby predict the pathway by which C4 photosynthesis evolved. Based on our models, we can predict which evolutionary steps had to be taken and in what chronological order. These results can be used to improve our experimental design. In addition, we can acquire a deeper understanding of the interactions between different factors within the model. Annual and perennial life histories is another research area of the cluster that can help to achieve yield increases. In spring, perennial plants can grow and accumulate biomass extremely rapidly by falling back on a well-established root system developed in previous years and on nutrients located in storage organs. In addition, their root systems prevent soil erosion. However, most currently cultivated crops are annual plants. A detailed knowledge of plant genes and genomes is required to modify this complex trait. By taking advantage of next-generation sequencing technologies, sea plants researchers were able to decode several genomes of annual and perennial plants and to identify differences between them. To confirm the results obtained in model organisms, researchers also analyzed crop plants in the field using the latest biostatistical and quantitative methods. By comparing sequencing data, we were able to identify genes that control annual and perennial life histories. We first analyzed these genes in model plants, such as the Arabidopsis thaliana, which is an annual plant, and Arabis alpina, which is a perennial plant. Next, we performed further investigations in crops, such as barley, which my group is currently working on. Another target to enhance plant efficiency and performance is the so-called microbiome, which comprises all microorganisms in and on plant leaves and roots. Dr. Ruben Garrido Oter, who recently completed his PhD at the CPLAS Graduate School, is working on this research topic. Plants associate with very complex communities of bacteria and fungi that have an impact on their health and fitness. So our research goal is to understand how these communities are formed and how do they interact with the plant. And in order to do so, we have isolated the majority of the microbiota members that associate with Arabidopsis thaliana so that we can reconstruct synthetic communities in the laboratory. 
Plants also have several defense mechanisms. They produce a wide range of substances that can protect them against potential enemies. This is another research area of the cluster. c scientists investigate the influence of microorganisms on plants, including the barley crop. Using state-of-the-art imaging techniques, such as magnetic resonance imaging, they are able to analyze the three-dimensional structure of roots and the process of root growth in the absence and presence of different microorganisms. And then Over the past five years, the collaborations of the c have led to significant advances in the field. This is evidenced by the publication of more than 300 joint studies, which is an excellent output even in international terms. Moreover, I would like to emphasize that we have trained many excellent early career scientists who have now moved on to other institutions or countries and will continue to make important contributions to the plant sciences field. Within the framework of the cluster, the first study program in quantitative biology in Germany was jointly established between the universities of Düsseldorf and Cologne. The comprehensive training programs of the c graduate school and the c postdoc program effectively prepare doctoral and postdoctoral researchers for their future careers. Once per month, all members of the cluster meet for scientific discussions and a Friday afternoon social event. The cluster offers childcare for parents during all c events. By supporting the intensive and interdisciplinary cooperation of all cluster members, the c -class promotes collaborations to successfully implement its ambitious research program. In the future, we seek to provide an even better environment for early career researchers, for example, by implementing novel study programs and by providing exciting opportunities for independent research group leaders. With regards to the research program, we will place a stronger emphasis on the adaptability of plants to changing environmental conditions. This will involve the use of novel novel technologies, including synthetic biology, and genome editing techniques such as the CRISPR-Cas9 system. Over the past few years, c scientists have made a huge step towards their common goal, to analyze complex plant traits, and thus towards ensuring sustainable food security.